All right, what's up, y'all? This is Mustafa. Welcome to another episode of Exposure Runs, the podcast. Of course, today we have the top two brothers in Illinois, along with their father. We have Jeremy Fierce Sr., Jeremy Fierce Jr., and Jeremiah Fierce. What's up, fellas? What's up? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you, doing? you know. How what's you up, doing? Jeremiah? How you doing? Don't, don't get quiet now, brother. You was just... You had a you had a lot going on right before we went on the air. I want to make sure you know you get your fair shine as the not the younger brother, but the the oh. younger of the older brother. All right, so we're just gonna jump right into this interview. I hope y'all don't mind. Right off the bat, <laughs> I don't know what I just did. He tapped the interview. You are you watching it on the live? My bad. No, it's all good. I don't even know how that worked. So right off the bat, Jeremiah and Jeremy. Who is the better player? Me, for sure. Um, I definitely say it's me just because, you know, I, I bring everything to the game. You know, the defense, rebounding, shooting, the passing. You just got to have it all. Mm. What about you, Jeremiah? What you got? I'm definitely the best player, the best brother as well. Best brother and best player. Yeah. So I, I shoot, I defend, lost. play mate. I just do everything. I bring everything to the table. <laughs> So that's me, just sir. What about you, Pop? Who's the better? Who's the better player? Who's the better son? In what aspect? All aspects. Um, they different. You know what I'm saying answer. they they different. They unique in their own ways. Uh, Jeremiah probably caused me a little bit more trouble. Innocently though, like it ain't nothing crazy, right? But Jeremy, he's just a good kid. He ain't. I don't know if he ever got in trouble, like, ever, like, in his life. He Word. just really don't do nothing. And he's a good big brother. You know, he lead by example. He's just a good, humble kid in general. He don't cause no problems. But Jeremiah don't cause no problems either. But he just, like, real, like, he he ha ha you know, real real goofy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, to, you know, get into maybe, everything. Yeah, everything. Okay. Yeah. So, so the the Sun Times just named y'all both the best siblings in Illinois history, like <clears throat> that that's a huge thing. Like Illinois history, the history of Illinois basketball, and all of y'all know I'm you know I'm not really from Illinois. I'm from Philadelphia, so but I know the culture and the history of Illinois. Can y'all both speak to what that means and like how much possible pressure that is? Um, overall, you know, it's it's a big big accomplishment, big accomplishment. You know, it's uh, big time just to be named best siblings. I don't know if that was a, a war for real. But <laughs> right, that, right, that was, right. But just overall, that's big. Um, you know, it's kind of going to be hard to beat. Yeah. And I, I don't think Illinois will ever have siblings like y'all again. Yeah. And, and then y'all got a younger brother as well coming yeah, out. I was so. going to say, I'll say uh, the craziest thing is there's still another one. I know. So I don't know how you award that. But, right. um yeah, I mean, I, I would say, I don't know, like he said, I don't know if it's something that's a real thing, right. but I get where, where they was going with it, right. what they was trying to do, and, you know, just to have two brothers that's, you know, accomplished and, you know, headed in the same type of direction, you know, it's probably, you know, tough to do. And then, like, even all year with them being home, I think Jeremy was probably ranked number one in the mm -hmm. state in, mm -hmm. in his class, and mm -hmm. then Jeremiah ranked number one. And I don't know if that's ever. Been that, I don't either. think that's ever happened either. So. And and being from Illinois, uh, um, being from Philadelphia rather, from Pennsylvania. Now I could be wrong, and somebody can correct me, but I don't know if Pennsylvania has had that. So I mean, that is a huge thing. I mean, Jeremiah, like what 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 does that mean to you to to know that you and your brother are being considered the best brothers in the history of Illinois basketball? Mm, that's definitely something to take into consideration and to be proud about because we both, I guess, earned that award or title, as you could say, but it just feels good. Okay. Um, one thing that I noticed when y'all came in that I, that I think is pretty dope is that y'all brothers, like y'all y'all really interact like y'all brothers regardless of y'all social and and social media and just kind of basketball status like kind of like talk about how often do y'all or did y'all fight <coughs> growing up as 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 siblings um probably almost every day uh whether it's uh 
game, toys, basketball. This is something that is probably going to be an argument about, but, you know, it's a short period of time. It'd be like five, ten minutes. All right. Other than that, back to playing the game together, playing basketball together, joking, watching cartoons, movies, right. games. So and, and it was like no real fight. Right, 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 right. You feel me? Like, like he said, if it wasn't something simple, you know, I, I can't even tell you the last time, unless they was hooping. I was going to kind of segue nah, into they, that. If they hooping, I think it might have took like <clears throat> 10 years for them to even finish a one-on-one game. Because like once they get down to the wire, right. it's going to be some scratching and hacking and punching and kicking and <clears throat> German. wrestling. And <laughs> they both was like competitive. They ain't now one-on-one to lose. Like, And I sit there and let them the whole time too. Just let them go. What? I let them fight. I just watch them. It, okay. did, it didn't matter, you know what I'm saying? But at some point, the game would end just with their mom or something. Like, all right, game is over. That's enough. Yeah, that's right, enough. right, right, right. Yeah, I can't even remember, like, a lot of that game. And then, oh, yeah, I forgot. And then when somebody did win, I could never be officiate because I cheated. Because yeah, you cheated for them. <laughs> I cheated. If Jeremiah won, Jeremy going to say I cheated. If Jeremy won, Jeremiah going to say I cheated. cheated. Every single time I cheated. <laughs> What about you, Jeremy? Like what, uh, Jeremiah? Rather, I'm sorry. What, what, like, what was that like growing up? You know, and and, and y'all having no sibling rivalries on the court. You know, probably playing with toys, the video game. Like, what, what was that like? Um, at home, it's definitely been fights, but mainly because Jeremy started it. Or <laughs> he was just tripping. But on the court, it's been a lot of fights too, one on one. Like he said, we never used to really finish, but as we got older. We finish a ninety nine percent of the time. I yeah, win, so. it's cap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. I knew he was gonna say it. Nah, <laughs> some cap. <laughs> nah. No, I give y'all the real after you finish. All right, cool. All right, so what I like you to do now, Jeremy, is break down your brother's game. What are his strengths and what are his weaknesses? And then Jeremiah, I'm gonna ask you to do the same for him. Okay. Uh, I definitely say Jeremiah's strengths is you know shooting, playmaking, um, his ability to score. Um, his ability to shoot from anywhere on the court. I, I, nah, I seen that. Um, you know, his defense got a lot better. I say I, I give defense a strength for him now. You know, he has some big time steals, big time plays. And I just I, seen I one recently. Weekend. Yeah, yep. I saw that. I saw that. I saw that. Um, his rebounding got a lot better. Mm, IQ is 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 strong, but I definitely say his weaknesses is probably uh just mental mental battle. Just make sure you're keeping his head. Whether it's good or bad, okay. try to stay level headed and, okay. and just always make sure he can control himself. Okay. What about you, Jeremiah? How would you uh, how would you scout your brother? What are his strengths and what are his weaknesses? His strengths are definitely leading, as you know, as people know him as the forging, leading, defending. Um, almost every team he's played with or been playing with, they win. So you could say he's a winner. His shot came a long way. He could shoot, kind of now. Shoot, kind of now. <laughs> okay. Um, that's his strengths and his weaknesses. He don't really have any. Just he have his moments where he get frustrated when he don't make shots. But other than that, nothing really I can think of. Okay, Pop. I want you to break down both their games. What are their strengths and what are their weaknesses? Um. <coughs> so. I'm going to start with uh, Jeremy. So, just like Jeremiah said, so his strengths is obviously he's a leader, winner, floor general, ultra competitor. You know what I'm saying? Um, He has intangibles, things that you can't teach. IQ, I always knew he had a super IQ, like, like super high IQ at a young age. Just like I remember I was overseas and I'd be playing and my boys was like four or five years old, three, I don't know. And I'd come home and they'd be sitting front row. I'd be watching, I'd come home and Jeremy would be like, Dad, you know, why you didn't do this? Or on that play, you know what I'm saying? He should have did that or that wasn't a goal 10 or you know, he shouldn't have did that at this moment or you should have you. I'm talking about four or five years old. Mm. Just understanding the game was just different. Right. And, and I didn't think Jeremiah would have that. 
I'm be honest. So um, IQ crazy, you know, pick and roll ability, two way guard, um, ultra quick, fast. You know, athleticism came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. You know, weakness um, was obviously the jump shot. Like we always knew we had to put in work on that. But a lot of people don't know how far Jeremy came. Like he was terrible when he was younger. Like he couldn't chew gum and walk straight. Like <laughs> he was, I ain't, I'm being real. Like he was bad. Like all the way up until like seventh grade, I almost made him stop playing. Yeah, we got into it. Like he just always wanted. That? Yeah, he know. He always just want to play the video game and you know cry to his mom and. You know, he always had this little attitude. He ain't, Jeremy ain't love the game. He ain't care about the game. Like, he video, I say, I don't, I'm not going to force you. Like, I could care less. Right. So I used to just be locked <clears> in. <throat> Me and Jeremiah started traveling all around the country. Jeremy, you know, took a little time off. And then one day he woke up. And then I could tell, like, he wanted to do it again. But right. I had to really lock in and start training with him because he was bad. Like I, I, I didn't even know. I didn't think he'd even be like a Division One ball player at one point, and then all of a sudden he just came out of nowhere. I was like, okay. So Jeremy, like he got pretty much everything you could coach's dream you could want, except for uh, we just got to get them shooting that ball at a high level. It's reps, confidence, and reps. Jeremiah, over special. Like at a young age, you know, we was in second grade, first grade. He, thirty points easy you know what I'm saying playing up yeah. just a bucket getter mm. so it was funny with him how he started he used to walk in the gym and he wouldn't even do no layups warm up nothing mm. he just take the ball start throwing full court shots I'm talking about just launching them falling on the ground just launching he always wanted to be a long range three point shooter and I knew that like and I never stopped it I promise you again it to end the practice to begin the practice to start the practice during the practice he just launching that thing just full court from here. <laughs> That's all he ever wanted to do. I don't know what happened to his shot now, but oh, wow. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but feel for the game. Right now, Jeremiah strengths like everything Jeremy got, he got, and I did not think it was gonna happen. Mm. I didn't think his IQ was gonna be there, but it's there. You know his passing ability. I didn't think he have it, but it's there. Shout out to me this year. Uh. <laughs> Defense picking up, you know, handle off the chain. The will to win is coming. The competitiveness is there. Like, he picked up everything I didn't think he would get. I thought he'd just be like a shooter type. And he just, now he got all of them. He got, he got everything now. So, he just got to keep working, man. Hit the weights, you know. I don't think they ever lifted Jolly up before. I don't think they ever touched. That's cap. I don't know. I don't think they oh. ever touched the weight of Jolly. Yeah, that's from that's cap. <laughs> once he hit the weights, once he hit the weights, he's going to be all right. Okay. Um, Jeremiah, if you could play with any current Illinois player, who would it be? <laughs> uh, Other than um, your brother, of course. Um, I would want to play with pro probably. Man, it ain't happening that hard, man. Yes, it is. I probably want to play with the twins. Miles and Ruben? Yeah, just because they bring so much to the game. Um, Antonio, he run, the, he run the floor real well. He could jump. He could – his jump shot came a little weak, handled the ball, and probably DJ from Whitney Young. Yeah, I like DJ a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like DJ piece. a lot. Yeah, what about you, Jeremiah? I mean, you you played with some really good players. I mean, you was in the McDonald's All American game, of course. Um, but just speaking about the players in Illinois, if you could play with any player, who would it be? Um, definitely, probably with Michaela Count, Michaela Rich. Yeah, yeah. I mean, three, technically, three, yeah, yeah. Technically, uh, probably yeah. Michaela Rich or uh, Cam Presley. Oh, who? Uh, Cam Christie. Oh, yeah, Cam. I like, I like the way yeah, he came Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a really nice jump shot. Yeah. Finesse. He, he, his, he plays the game Fairless, though. so, and, and this I'm, what I'm going to say is not a bad thing. He plays, instead of using the word slow, I'm going to use meticulous. He plays very meticulous. Everything he does is just very, uh, 
machine, like kind of like Kawhi, like just yeah. you know jump shot. He he put can, that he yeah. put that thing up. Too. Yeah, he will. Yeah. He will. I like, and he's real. He's real quiet too. Yeah. Like he just Chill. yeah, real like, laid back. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that. Um, Pop, you played at Ohio University for two years. Yeah. Um, then you played at Benedictine and professionally overseas. What was your game like? Scout your game today if you were scouting you yesterday. Um, scout me. Scout you. If you was you now, right. scout you as a player back then. Um, Don't get to cap it. Yeah. <laughs> See, they, 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 and they, I, we want to hear it. Go. Like, Here they go. I, we want to hear it. Here they go. <laughs> What type of player were you? Better than both of them, first of all. That's Cat? That's Cat. How you know? Because I seen them highlights on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me talk, though. Go ahead. Speak Man, about your game. Uh, I was um, athletic, okay. IQ. You know, I had an ultra IQ, too. I was quick, fast, um, great measurements for a PG. Pretty much one, two, everywhere I went. I was ultra competitive. Couldn't shoot it great. Um, at, when I was young in high school, just a scoring machine. I scored a hell of, scored a ball. And um, just one of the top players, too. Um, as I got a little bit older, I really became a, a big-time shooter. But when I was younger, no. But other than that, like, just real same kind of similarities that, that they got, like, both of them got like a lot of my game, just in a different way. I could see it through all three of them, even Jamari. So that was me. Okay, um, <clears throat> Jeremiah. Right Real now, you playing. Up. You're playing up with Bradley Bill, right? Yes, sir. What's that experience like? Um, my first my first time playing up in session one. First game, it was not hard, but it was like. Took me some time to figure it out. It was hard. No, it was. It took me some time to figure it out, but after that, it just started to come real like easy and learning, learning like what I can do, what I can't do throughout the sessions. <laughs> but so easy. Um, definitely great. The team they had chemistry before. They played together for two, three years before me. So I just came and joined the team to help. How did they welcome you to the team? Was it was it one of them, you know, like who who was this young guy type of thing? Nah, it was they all <clears throat> they welcomed me like family. First time I came, everybody was cool. We all got along. First practice through now, we all still get along. So it was just great. And when you say it was hard, um, kind of playing up, like what, explain that a little bit. Like what was hard about it? Um. Just the competition, like okay. school, school wasn't <clears throat> wasn't as competitive, and they wasn't as big and as strong as they are on the circuit. So just figuring like figuring out like how to use my body and how to use my skills and moves to see what work and what don't work. Okay, high level athletes, man. Yeah, yeah, different, yeah, different, and, and different, that's something different that different game. When you and I talk behind the scenes, you used to tell me about that all the time, like just kind of the difference. Um, uh, Jeremy, when you Played on the circuit, and and you played AAU ball, and I know it's a at least I think it's a welcomed change and not having to play, but uh, like kind of talk a little bit about what what Jeremy is speaking about, like the competition, the strength, how you had to adjust. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, I definitely say my sophomore year, I was playing with Brad Billy Lee, and you know, seventeens with mm -hmm. uh, Nick Smith, mm -hmm. your Brandon Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually I, I don't cap, but my my job was kind of easy. Just to, you know, run a team, play defense, uh, Gibby Miller, Nick, mm -hmm. uh, my shooters, just get them Kellen, the, ball. Mm -hmm. the other Nick, just get them the ball, you know, and, and make sure it's at the right time and when they open. So I just ran the team, but also, you know, I kind of had some big games. Like my first game in PGM, I think I had like 18. So it was just, um, just trying to find my purpose on that team. Okay. So just really finding my purpose and – it was real light. I didn't really have to do much, but the competition and the athletes and the, you know, competitiveness. It was it was different, different levels. So hey, I kind of told Jeremiah, tell him that story uh, when you played at La Lou your first tournament. 
Oh yeah, um, my <laughs> sophomore year, you know, we just had COVID, and um, Lalamere was the closest option, best option for me, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they were also having a season, so I end up going there, and we go for our first tournament. It's in uh, Washington, I think. I'm pretty sure it was Virginia. in Washington, Virginia. Maybe, was yeah. it? In, was it in Virginia? It was in Virginia. So we had our, um, you know, first game. We played Wasatch, and I had about like six turnovers. I just go out there and I'm, you know, trying to do floater shots. It's just like I never seen this before. Never seen these type of athletes, these players. Um, and then after the game, I text my dad. I was like, you know, this is kind of like playing in the pros. <laughs> yeah, sophomore, you know, I was 15. It was it was a different level. I text him back like, "LOL." I said, "You ain't got to college yet. You talking about pros?" But that's what I mean by different levels. You know what I'm saying? Like it's real live levels to this. So when people see that stuff on the YouTube videos or the or the you know the highlights, it, it doesn't really do it no justice. The type um, of athlete, the type of IQ, the type of player being on the court, then actually being on the court. No, different. Different for sure. Yeah. Everybody's much bigger, stronger, skilled, 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 athletic, quick, long, quicker, faster. So, so let me let me ask you, Jeremiah, because obviously last year, like you know, I, I traveled with you guys with Xavier, and 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 and, and forgive the ignorance of the question because I, just right off the back, I know there's a huge difference in that competitive uh, circuit, if you will. Right. J- just remembering what that was like, like. Can you just talk a little bit about the difference in the athlete on that circuit versus the circuit that you're on now? Um, it was still on the circuit I played on last year with the team and Xavier and them. It was still some very athletic players and skilled players, but just felt like the circuit I'm on now is like a whole nother level. Like I think of it as like everybody, everybody on the team yeah, is like more – Athletic, more quicker, more usually, you know, independent. You usually they have like their one or two, one or two. They're really athletic and right, really right, skilled players. Right, but everybody now every EYB is like the whole every single twelve. Team. So when you were just talking just now, right, one of the things that you said, like one of your breakout games on that circuit was eighteen. I, I've been watching you play for a long time. Right. And you can get 18 with no fingers, <laughs> right, right, right. right, on one foot. That was his best game. Right, right. And so when you talk about 18 points on the circuit and you score 44 last year, <laughs> like, like kind of talk about that. Like 18 on the EYBL versus 44. Like what's your high, so far, what's your highest game on the EYBL point-wise? 18. Right. So, like, that's a big thing. And y'all, are you saying that? You don't really need to score a lot on the circuit. Like, just do your job, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah, basically. It's like your purpose. So, like, some players on certain teams, their purpose is to just score and try to put points on the board for their team. And other players is to play a role. And some guards' purpose is to win, score, and uh, play make and get everybody else involved. So, you really just got to play your purpose. Your, your role. Your role is different. And like certain situations, like basically what he's saying is, he go on this team. Depending on the personnel, he might have to score that thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Depending on how much help he got, how many other scores, you know, is he what option he is. Like you might go on this team and barely score, you know, because it's not needed. Right. Like he was saying, he fit, facilitated to a lot of um of the top guys. Mm-hmm. But they different players. But Jeremiah on top team in the EYBL right, right now, right? And he don't have to score like crazy because his whole team can score. Now he could have been on another team and and score and need to score, right? So it's just all that's for any level. That's college. That's league. You know what I'm saying? Your role could be different. Like you, Ben Gordon was that dude for the Bulls. You know what I mean? You go to Detroit or go somewhere else, and the role changed. Lou Aldean, like right. Joaquin Noah. I mean, certain you could be a franchise player here, and then go over there, and then have more of a role. Right. Okay. Um, so far, <clears throat> you just graduated, right? Yep. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank yep, you. yep. 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 Um, talk a little bit about both of y'all. Your best moment in high school, on and off the court. Um, 
on the court, what would we probably say? Would you probably say that uh Saint Rita. Saint Rita? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Saint yeah. Saint Rita or um Cam Christie that game. Rolling Medals. Rolling yeah, Medals. What about Whitney Rolling Young? Medals. Whitney Young was. Oh, that was Whitney see how they do me. Whitney Young. Ah Whitney Young. <laughs> yeah. I was I was on, on ten. But uh probably Saint Rita. Saint Rita and probably Rolling Medals. But mostly Saint Rita. Um The classic was all right too. Yeah. But Chicago foul classic. Trouble. You got foul trouble early. Well, it was good for you. Yeah. Uh, I ain't like that. <laughs> Anyways. And what about off the court? <clears throat> um, Every day, probably. Yeah, probably just our practices. Practices. Going out know, of town for tournaments and stuff like that. Going out to eat. Yeah. Just the whole. Bottom. The whole experience. The whole, the whole season was. All right. Uh, realistically oh, speaking, uh, Jeremiah, um, how much does rankings mean to you? Mm. Not as they don't mean as much as you get older, because you realize like anybody can outplay anybody. So well, the number they put on the side of their name or in front of their name don't really mean them. But uh, every kid say the rankings don't really matter when they like in middle school and just now enter high school, but they really do care about it. But over time, you'd be like anybody can outplay anybody, or you may not think he is good as. What they think What that ranking is Yeah Alright uh, Same question to you uh, Jeremy Like right now you And correct me if I'm wrong right? When I last checked You were 26 in the top 100 On ESPN So what does rankings mean to you And is that ranking accurate <laughs> Um <laughs> Meaning did I get that right I mean I know you probably think you're Close enough number- Yeah I don't, I don't know what it is now But you know They, they changed it the last few times But uh, Rankings really don't mean anything It's you know Somebody else is paying on a player, but sometimes you know, no, it do show like your hard work and what's paying off. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, the main goal is you know college, and then hopefully after college, professional, mm-hmm. whether it's NBA overseas. So at the end of the day, the the ranking can't really get you to college. It can't really get you where you need to be. You still have to do it and put the work in. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, what about you, Paul? What like what does <clears throat> rankings mean to you as a, as a father? When you see those rankings, and obviously, first and foremost, biasly, but realistically speaking, you feel like, oh, I I think my son is twenty five, or I think he's five, or, or you know, like what 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 does that mean to you? Man, so <coughs> if I'm being honest, rankings don't mean nothing to me. Um. Play the game, of course, because there is politics to this. But at the end of the day, like he said, and like he said, it's just a number. But for me, within, it means nothing. But from the outside looking in, mm-hmm. it's what people take and run with. Mm-hmm. You know, I really don't, like, you know. Humbly speaking, like I really do this. Like I can really look at a player and evaluate him and be like, you know, he this or he that or he can't be this or his potential is this or that. Like, it's just I just feel like it's kind of a gift that I got. But um, if you rank number one or or number fifty, it really don't matter. But like Jeremy said, well, I think one thing I might have to disagree with. Like, I think rankings can help a kid get to college, but what you do when you get there. That's a whole different ball right, game. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Because somebody can look at, oh, he ranked this, he ranked that, or <clears throat> he must be good, or he can do this, or he got to be elite at high level. And me, I'm looking at it like, no. Or it's a kid that's not ranked as high, and I'm like, oh, he the real deal. Mm-hmm. You know, like, how? Well, he only ranked this, or he don't. Like, that don't mean nothing. Mm-hmm. It depends on who's doing the evaluate. Right. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, like, what your game really look like what do you really bring to the table when it comes to, um, you know, your actual skill set, your value, and then once you get there, because I know a lot of dudes that was ranked real high and they ain't take their warm ups off. You know what I'm saying? I didn't play, I didn't came up with some ultra athletic, highly ranked, you know, and never took that warm up off. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like that don't matter. To, I tell them all the time, man. We gotta be. You want the hype Don't get me wrong You want the hype mm-hmm. But you want to be able To back it up Right 
Because there's nothing more, in my opinion, there's nothing more embarrassing than getting the hype, the rank, the exposure, all that, and then you can't bust a grape. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the rankings are really on me. I mean, you can look at right now, every year, college guys from NBA come out of nowhere, D2 stories, mm-hmm. all that. I'm like, half of Miami Heat roster. Man, I don't mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you really like that or if you put in that work, it's going to show. Mm-hmm. It's going to show So it's like <laughs> You put in that work It's going to show So it's like I don't want I used to I talk about the rankings All the time With like people And it's like For the youngins Like I, I had to tell my kids All the time You want to be ranked When you in Not that it matter But it's not how you start How you think You want to be ranked When you in 5th, 6th, 7th grade You used to say that grade. A lot last year You used to say that a lot you last year You want to be the man When you in 8th grade or you want to be the the man when you're a senior. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that stuff don't matter, man, because it'll be I don't know how many guys right now draft in the lottery that probably this year that probably wasn't really like that or rank like that right. to right. you know what I'm saying? The people that uh do the rankings. Okay. Uh Jeremy, <clears throat> tell us about your Olympic experience. Like what was that like? Um that whole experience of Representing the USA. Um, the first U sixteen was kind of wild, actually. <coughs> um, I had just got injured, came off injury, you right. know, still finished Peace Jam. I had broke my shoulder in a game against Team Mellow. Uh, I went out for a dunk. Can Whitmore, he actually in the draft right now, project a lottery. He tried to block it, block me, end up falling, breaking my shoulder. But I still, you know, KT Tate, Ice, he hot, Ivy Pro fan. All of that through, like, the rest of the Peace Jam. Uh, I was at home. My dad called. He was like, uh, you want to go to U16 tryouts for USA? I was like, when is it? He said, uh, you got to leave tomorrow. <laughs> I just took a whole week off and didn't do no basketball, no nothing. I was like, all right, come on. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Shoulder all messed might, up. Might as well. I go out there, you know, I'm a competitor. I'm going to compete regardless. Go out there, make, like, the final 18. And make the final 12. And then, you know, we end up going to uh, Mexico. Mm-hmm. But it was during COVID, so we had to do COVID tests. Uh, the food was horrible. It's like mm-hmm. they was giving us, like, frog legs. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> I never ate it. It was, like, three days straight. We and he had a picky eater. Three days straight, we didn't eat. Over we had practice. Like, everybody's messing layups, dead tired. It just, just wasn't the best. <laughs> but uh, overall, you know, it was... Pretty sweet. We kind of blew everybody out, but Argentina had, was a really good team. Uh, we ended up winning by 15. I think it was 90 or 75. But we ended up winning by 15. Um, it was good. Just building bonds in a different, you know, country. Uh, it was new, mm-hmm. something we never did, never experienced. But I definitely say, you know, the food wasn't the best. But somehow we end up. Uh, we found, it, found like, a Domino's. They had, like, some, like, grub in there. DoorDash. <laughs> and, like, we, uh, one time we just randomly picked, like, a pizza. It looked like a pizza. It had mushrooms and stuff on it. Like, we took it off. But then we finally, like, the last, last night, we was just up all night. And we finally found, like, some good wings. But, nah, but back to uh, U17. U17, uh, I went in, like, let me, let me try to make this when I'm fully healthy. Mm-hmm. Um. The competition is a lot more better, bigger, stronger players. Mm-hmm. Um, just ready to work. But I know, like, my leadership and, you know, the things that others don't have that I have can carry me and help me. So just going in there leading, everybody on USA that's probably there can score. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking to, to go be a scorer. Go right, be a right, leader. Right, right. Go, go do something that others not willing to do. So just going in there, you know, playing defense, talking, leading, Helping make U17. Uh, we go down there to uh, Spain. We had a great group. Um, we actually was on a beach, it's like a tourist town. We got to go to the beach every day. Mm-hmm. You know, competition is 10 times better because it's the world, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, world competition is 10 times better. Uh, actually, if you don't come play, it's a possibility that you can lose. Mm-hmm. So we had to come in every game, like locked in, ready to play, no mistakes. Mm-hmm. And that championship game. Mm. There's something I'll probably never forget. Just playing against Spain in Spain, it was about 
seven, eight thousand people in the gym. They had uh Yeah uh drums, they had fire, like rings. It felt like when you was on the on the court, the court the gym was rocking. Was shaking. Was shaking mm-hmm. like never experienced nothing like that. When they hit a shot, it sounded like somebody oh. scored a soccer goal. Yeah, the whole I remember their first three they hit. They missed like two in a row, they hit the third Rena one. Was, the Rena four, was rocking. Rena just going crazy. And then we end up getting in, you know, like a little altercation at the end of the game. <laughs> so, like, they was blowing us, uh, sticking up his middle fingers. It was, it, was, it was wild. But, like, overall, it was a great experience. That's what's up. And you just went through something similar, like, when you went out for the Olympic team as well, didn't you? Yeah, Jeremiah? it was a uh, mini camp. Okay. And what was that like for you? Um, It was great. Just playing against some of the best competition in my class in 2024 and 2026. And the be- some of the best players in the world, they say, or country. And just going out there and compete and just showing everybody what I could do. And all of the coaches and the staff and stuff like that. So it was good. Um, do you think you're going to get invited back to try no, they, to? They're there right now. He can't go, um, in all honesty, because he's a, it's an A's thing. Uh, so because it's his birthday So the mini camp Was just like a blessing Okay okay He can't actually make the team Okay he got had, you He would have to been born in 07 Got he you born in 06 Got you got you got you Got you um, Jeremy Michigan State They have such a rich hi- history When it comes to guards What do you think you can add to that? Um, I definitely can bring up uh, my leadership You know Michigan State to have uh, Tough Hard nosed guards mm-hmm. All of them mm-hmm. You know Come in Listen Ready to work and just tough. Like, I know I'm going to come in and whatever happened, I'm going to be leading or trying to lead. Or whether it's on the court or off the court, um, bring my toughness, uh, my playmaking. I know I'm ready to come in and, you know. And, with some, um, what, what, is, what, is, what is the coach like at Michigan State? Uh, coach Izzo? I yeah. love Coach Izzo. Coach Izzo, he's, uh, he's kind of crazy, but he's not crazy. Um, on the court, I'll definitely say he's crazy. You know, basketball activities, he's crazy. But off the court, uh, great person. Uh, caring, loving, um, family person. He just wants you to be the best, best person. Okay. And I think that's what really led me to choose the Michigan State. Okay. He just gave me a family vibe. Okay. And that was something that I really wanted. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah, without giving away too much, because I know you're still going through the recruiting process, uh, what have been your favorite school visits so far? Um, Michigan State. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Michigan State was nice. Um, Oregon. I, 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 I like knew Oregon. you was going to say Oregon. They just Oregon just looked like it'll be fun just to yeah, be on the campus. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I ain't going to cut you off. Nah, you all good. Oregon was crazy, though. It was the field, the facilities, the schools, the campus. The campus, all type of stuff. You was just like, oh, my God. And then the owner of Nike was from there, so they get every exclusive shoe and exclusive clothes. And all the little students get to, like, try them on to just, like, walk around the campus and stuff like that. So just going there was crazy. Um, I liked Iowa. but <coughs> You said you liked Iowa? Yeah, it was. I, Iowa I'm not going to lie. That's kind of surprising to hear. Yeah, I was like, <coughs> I, but you know what? Let me, let me walk that back a little bit. Only because, like, being from the Midwest, you guys are like from Illinois, so like, I I, I should expect that. But being an East Coaster, like, yeah. I, I would Iowa would Thank would ne- no disrespect to Iowa and you know, coach, they would never be on my consideration list. But it's not me, so I mean, it is what wait, it is. Wait, what was wrong with Iowa? I, I just think it just <laughs> looks Coast. boring as hell. I'm from the East Coast. I would never pick Iowa. Man, you know, the campus actually be... I'm sure. Yeah. I, I listen, no, so whoever is listening to this that's an Iowa fan or... I'm just from the East Coast. They wouldn't... They would, I wouldn't even consider... I, but I'm not that good of an athlete, so I would have never... I would have never considered me, so I would never have to consider them. If you go downtown Iowa, you might have a ball, though. <laughs> I might change my mind. I mean, on the campus, yeah. Okay. Boston. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. Um, I just, I just don't see that. But go ahead. And just the rest of the schools that like offered me a scholarship, I like all, I like all of them. 
And that's a good political answer. I like that. Hopefully, I can get down there to see like <laughs> see all of the campuses and stuff like that. So okay, um, both of y'all, uh, start with you, Jeremy. During your process, uh, tell us one thing you liked and one thing you didn't like during your recruitment process. Um, one thing I liked was the definitely you know the communication. Okay, just being able to um, give the family feel. Felt like it was the place to meet some people I can trust. Okay. Uh, one thing I didn't like was uh, maybe like the communication part again. You know, you know, like not not hearing from some coaches. Right, 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 and, right. You know, not fully interested. Did they hold it against you when you didn't when they didn't hear back from you? I was uh, gonna say you know nah. that worked too well. Uh, no, nah, so you know, like I dealt with that yeah. shit, and that, that that for me as a, that shit really got on my fucking. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, that, that was well. one of the things that bothered me the most. They want from you what they're not willing to give in return. I don't operate like that as a human being. Right. Like, I, just to give you an example, the relationship with me, and your father, your, your father has always shown me the utmost respect. So I, 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 if I'm not matching that, he should call me out on it. So I try to go above and beyond that. And it's the same thing. I mean, just because you are young men, I feel like some coaches, they, they kind of take advantage of that opportunity of communication. Like, oh, well, he ain't calling me back. But it's like, well, you ain't calling him the fuck back either. Right, it's supposed right. to go both ways. But and, like, I tell my, my son, so like, I just told him, was it yesterday, the day before? Two days so ago. At the same time, like, stay in contact with these coaches because, you know, it's easy to get an offer. But, you know, now you get an offer and you don't ever reach out to them or ever talk to them again because mm-hmm. you was calling them, you know, before. They, right, 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 right. Oh, so, I, you know, for mine, you got to do it the right way. Right. You feel me? Because right. just like you said, on the end, you want them to – Go about it the right way. I want them to go about right. it the right way right. too. Right, right, and that's how you got to be. What about you, uh, Jeremiah? Like, what what some things that you like and some things that you dislike about the recruiting process? Um, uh, I'd definitely say just the uh, attention, I guess you could say, and like just being able to talk to some coaches you never thought you would have been able to talk to, like. Some dream schools and stuff like that. Oh yeah. But something I don't like about it is what Jeremy said, like the communication. Sometimes you'll reach out and they won't get back to you, or they say they'll get back to you and say they're interested and show you like they're not really that interested. So you just be like, okay, okay, it is what it is. Uh, Jeremy, if not Michigan State, what school would you have picked? Um, probably Michigan. Just uh, like Jawan a lot, like the program, what they was building and what they have. Mm, that was another school that kind of gave me like a, a family vibe. Um, they were kind of late in my recruiting process, but still just felt like if I would have chose them, it would have not been like a bad fit for me. Mm. He would have let me rock. Um, he let his players play. He let them have freedom. He's cool on and off the court. Um, all four his players and all four his team. I just felt like he's home. He's from hometown, you know, mm-hmm. right up the street. Right. Um, just felt like that would have been a good fit. Okay. What about Illinois? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> um, Jeremiah, what exactly are you looking for in a school, a coach, a team, as you consider your selection? Wait, not to get it wrong though. Uh, you know, I'm Michigan State, but they're the, the option now, technically. <laughs> um, that's definitely the play style, and. How the coaches coach their players and how they treat the players, and just treating the players right and the families right, of uh, the players. So definitely the play style. I like I like to play fast and play free and stuff like that. So I'll be willing to go to a school that let me play fast and play free, and treat me like one of their own. So okay, um, Pop, you own a restaurant. What's the name and the location of the restaurant? Uh, Drake and Soul Food uh, 17 West 35th Street Okay Chicago Illinois uh, Basically on 35th In between Dearborn and State Right next to the White Sox Stadium Okay And and, and I'm here to I'm here to verify That the, the food is good In that motherfucker I ain't even afraid <laughs> Go check it out um, pre- Definitely go pre- check it out but, but I asked that for a reason and, and the question is How have you been able To divide your time Between the business Of your restaurant And the business Of your son's Tough. 
uh, you know, I, I tried to set it up to put it in a um, position where it can kind of run without me being there. Mm-hmm. But I do miss a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? Like trying to get to visits and games and, you know, recruiting trips, mm-hmm. workouts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, you know, trying to juggle it. Like, I don't get as much time in the gym with them right now, like, as I want, as I want, as far as just, like, putting in work. Mm -hmm. But I kind of got them to a point now where they can kind of get that work in with other people and on on their own. People you trust. (laughs) People I trust, people they trust. Like, you know, they're not going to be really around nobody that I don't. Oh yeah, yeah, well I, I know that yeah. I I personally know that so yeah yeah if I ain't if you ain't fucking with them they ain't, they yeah, can't be around your kids yeah no nah, which is way. which is you know I, I appreciate you allowing <laughs> them to come on because yeah, if, yeah. if you don't mess with somebody you don't let your boys nah, be around them nah, and nah. I'm like that with Xavier I mean I mean y'all know that like I don't yeah. let Zay be around any just any old right. Tom Dick and Harry like it ain't going yeah. down like yeah, that nah, we ain't doing and Zay no he know not to even ask like yeah. if I don't fuck with him you can't fuck with him yeah we it's just that simple yeah it's just loyalty thing definitely you know what I'm saying it's like how you in the house. But see, that don't just go for coaches. That go for his peers as well. Yeah. If, I mean, some of y'all, I, I don't like to use the word friend just so loosey-goosey, but yeah. like people Associates. that yeah, people that y'all rock with on and off the court. Like, I mean, it's, it's a couple people that y'all know that y'all either play with, that y'all cool with. Like, I don't fuck with them. Right. And I don't let Zay fuck with them. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I don't is, I, I take this very seriously is because we're not from here, right? I, like I wear that <clears> on my sleeve, and so I need to know that people when he's out with them, they they're going to look after him. I, I don't have I won't have that problem in Philly. I know way too many people that if Xavier is out somewhere, that anywhere in the cities I can get to him, some or somebody will protect him. Right. I honest to God don't always feel that way mm-hmm. when he's out here. That someone somebody will have his back. Or somebody will protect him Either won't allow him to get into something Or won't allow something to get into him right. um, So like I, I'm, I'm very much like that So um, Alright so we, This is the part of the, the, the show As we winding down I want to kind of get both of y'all's Opinion on You know your, your peers um, So my <coughs> first question to Jeremiah is Who has guarded you the toughest This past school season Um I would definitely say probably Curry or Bennett, but I'm leaning most likely towards Bennett. Okay, individually wise, um, who was the who guarded you the the best? Who clamped you up, basically? No, nah, I can't. I don't can't cap. Don't cap. Don't cap. Don't cap. <laughs> you ain't get the best of everybody throughout this okay. season. Yes, yeah, isn't it? it have not Really been one specific person Okay That's locked me up It's been like more teams. of like Teams Yeah that like Got you Try to zone in on Me And not just me Like him And our other player They just zone in on us East. And make sure that we don't And make sure that we don't get off What about you Jeremy? Um I probably wouldn't say it's A player I'll definitely say uh It's been a few team efforts <laughs> <laughs> Right like, like, just if it's been probably one on one, I probably gonna win the matchup. Gonna win the matchup. But if it's uh, you know, five on one or like they want to be real physical and the rest don't want to call no right, calls, right, 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 right. Then you got to work with what what you get, what you got, you got. Right, 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 right. You know, um, who was your toughest guard? Who was it tough for you to guard, Jeremy? Um, this year. I'll probably say Cam. Cam? Yeah, just for how quick his release is. Um, he elevates up off the ground. He do. He get real high on that jump shot. Um, he moves. He cuts. And, you know, pass. He just don't stand. Um, probably Cam. Just, okay. You can't really block a shot. It's hard to really, you know, contest or be yeah, physical yeah, with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's probably going to be a foul. So I definitely say he, he moves a lot. It probably can. What about you, Jeremiah? Who was your toughest person to guard? Um, in state, I would say Cam as well, just because of the height difference he had with me and him. And but like overall throughout the season, I would say 
uh, a guard from Cardinal Ritter we played early on in the season, very first game. They had some very tough guards, physical guards, and guards that could score. So, All right. like Cardinal Ritter. And on the flip side of that, who, who was barbecue chicken for you? Who you give buckets to? Uh, Call them out. Oswego Ease. It was a <laughs> majority of the season it was buckets, but mostly Oswego Ease and Plainfield Central probably. What yeah. about you, Jay? Uh, Plainfield East. I gave him thirty and a half. <laughs> <laughs> thirty and a half. <laughs> yeah, that was that was so light. But uh, I definitely, you know, it was the night before me and my dad we were shooting, and then the <laughs> next day I just gave him thirty and a half. Like I had like the first fourteen straight. I don't know. I didn't miss. But then, you know, I just just chilled. I just relaxed. It wasn't even that that serious. But I gave him thirty and a half. No, you had some good games though. So. I gave him thirty. I gave Whitney Young, Young twenty eight. Twenty eight, basically thirty. Um, Roller medals, twenty eight. Roller medals, twenty eight. A few teams got a uh, Metamora. Metamora. Team Metamore is the is the team with the with the kid yeah, with the yeah, long yeah, 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 yeah. state champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah them twenty six. Uh, a few teams this year definitely got, got <laughs> barbecue chicken. Yeah, they got it. They got it. But <laughs> you know, they they definitely got it this year. All right, have either one of y'all ever been dunked on? Mm-hmm. Probably both of them. Who who yeah, who, who got you? Uh, um, it wasn't. Luckily, no cameras on, but it was Matthew in practice. <laughs> It was an open gym in game. No, no. I, that, I mean that counts. But, and and right. I mean, it, Matt, no, Matt, you got slammed on the game this year. No. Oh. What about you? Uh, Practice like, or game? I remember it was like uh, I was at this UIC camp in like ninth grade. <laughs> First time I got dunked on was by uh, Kennedy Brown. He's at uh, what school? Yeah. Yeah, he was uh, he just at a D one, but he just went. He going to Clayton State, right? Yeah, D two. Um, it was by him, and then just recently, like over the summer, you it was just like got two times. Boomed. And Cali, and you Cali. set yourself up. The ball that, is like that. Don't yeah. count. Okay, but why anyway, not? Why it not? Was, it was this big man from Houston Hoops. I rolled. He rolled. I tried to take the ball. He dunked on me. He took Put off up. from like outside the paint. Put him in a bucket. And then supposedly in Cali, <laughs> I got dunked on, but I slid out the way. I don't know how that didn't dunk on. Me, I guess. Um, Jeremiah, you just recently transferred um, to a prep school, correct? Yes, sir. Um, what do you expect when you go on going to this new school? Like, how do you expect to lead them? Like, what, you know, what's your expectations going in, into your? This is gonna be your senior year, junior, junior year. Okay, um, going into your junior. So you got two more years to just absolutely destroy high school basketball. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so talk a little bit about that. They have this thing called Geico Nationals. Like, it's real big on like all the best high schools in the world. So. I wouldn't win that and just lead my team to overall winning record and be like the be like one of the top guards and just put on just win on yeah. ESPN too. They got a lot of a lot of games on ESPN. Okay, and right, Jeremiah, going into college your freshman year, what's your expectations? Um, I'm sorry, Jeremy, my bad. That's okay. Um, uh, my expect expectations going into college. You know, definitely make um, all Big Ten freshman team. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, try to win Big Ten freshman of the year. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, you you know, like win Big Ten championship. Mm. Okay. Uh, win a national championship. All in your freshman year? Yeah. Um, try to get an all defensive team. Okay. You don't hear a lot of that from high school players um, going into college. I had just actually put it in my notes, all my goals, it's like for next year. Mentality. Um, you know, try to average, I don't know, maybe eight to 12, you know, six assists, you know, four or five rebounds, uh, shoot it well from the free throw line, shoot it well from the three, and maybe, you know, try to get an all Big Ten team, whether it's first, second, third, honorable mention, just. Some mm. good goals there, brother. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, those some big in. goals. In. That's big goals, and I can't it. see why they're not attainable. So, like, I mean, you know, we're gonna be rooting for you in my household. So, um, name your all-time NBA team starter and six man. All three of y'all. Uh, Steph Curry at the one, at the two I got MJ, 
at the three. KD, I got KD. At the four, I got LeBron. And at the five, I got Shaq. Who's who's coming off the bench? Kareem. Okay, that's not a bad. Okay, pop. You gotta be big. Dang, I hate this. <laughs> I don't know, I know. I'm gonna go with Steph. I was ready. Go ahead. You ready? <laughs> go ahead. Steph, um, MJ. Don't pick the same thing as me, bro. We gonna go Kobe at the three. Um, LeBron at the four. LeBron to be disappointed. You think he's a PG? <laughs> go ahead. Point four. Um, Kareem, we gonna go Bill Russell, Shaq. Shaq at the five, most dominant. But we gonna put for my six man. I'm gonna go Ray Allen. General manager, you know you okay. got you got shooters. You need a shooter. Shooting is very important. What about you, Pop? Yeah. Actually, actually, I'm making a trade. I'm um, I'm taking. No, I need LeBron. <laughs> I need a playmaker. <laughs> All right. What about you, Pop? See, the reason why they said Steph Curry at the one because that's my favorite player. No, <laughs> I'm definitely going Steph at the one. That's my favorite player. It's me. I'm going Jordan at the two. They stole. They, that's how you know these are my kids. <laughs> I'm going Kobe at the three. Y'all picking the same I'm going team. Tim Duncan at the four. Ooh. I'm going Tim Duncan at the four. The big fundamental. Yes, sir. And at the five, they both said Shaq. I would probably normally would say Shaq, but I'm going to go with the Admiral. David, David Robinson. David Robinson. And who's coming off your bench? Who's your sixth man? <sighs> no Brian ain't coming off the bench for me uh, I'm going Man. with Nick Van Exel Okay cook, a little left Alright he, he definitely was He definitely he, Yeah he definitely was cooking What? Who, who, he, pa- who Nick, passing on that team? Nick the quick Huh? <laughs> okay Who passing or shooting any threes on that team? My okay. team would definitely win because we all like six eight besides Curry. And I'm gonna tell you who my favorite player was for a whole lot of years. So I might have to go with Carmelo <sighs> Anthony off the bench. All right, so I'm going Steph at the one, AI at the two, Ooh. Mike at the three. I'm going. He Philly. He gonna get AI some love. I'm going. I'm going to probably go. Four man is tough. Yeah, it is tough on a four man. I'm going to probably go ahead and go. Uh, I'll take Brian at the four. I'm going to take Hakeem at the five. Oh, I forgot about Hakeem. And then for my six man, I'm going to go with either. Uh, I'm going to probably take Jamal Crawford coming Jamal off the bench. Crawford. He one, one of the best six man, yeah. six man of the year. I, 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 I think gonna, I think Hakeem will give everybody. I was buckets. gonna go Jamal or Lou Williams. I was gonna go Lou Will too, but I, I mean they are killers off the bench, and we had Lou Will in Philly, but so I already t- picked yeah. the Philly. So yeah, that, that that'll be my that'll be my my minds right there. Um, last two questions. Um, first one is for Dad, and then this last one will be for the both of y'all. Pop, in Islam, we believe that our children pick us as parents. Knowing that, what does that mean to you, that they picked you as their father? And just talk about the experience and importance of fatherhood. Uh, for me, family was always big, so um, I take that real personal and a lot of pride in it. Um, I could have been still playing like overseas to this day. Mm-hmm. A lot of people probably don't know this, but like I came home early um, just to lock in on them, and it had nothing even to do with basketball. Just being present, you know what I'm saying? Like they'll tell you, like they probably used to make 
I don't know if they how much they remember this, but they used to make like a little fun of me about being just like overprotective, cause I'm a lot different like than their mom. So it wasn't you no know, going outside really without no adult. The park was across the street. You could look at it. If we weren't going over, there, I ain't want them at the park. You know, ain't no swimming, no going with friends, no getting in pools, ain't no go spending night out. Like I ain't playing none of that. I'm like that now with Xavier. You know what I'm saying? Like. And it's hard to let go right now. Still. Like, if y'all want to have company, I wanted the company to come to the crib. Mm -hmm. We can plan all the parties. We can do whatever y'all want. They just got to come over here. Just right here. Because you never know, like, what be going on outside. And I was a kid, and I was young. And I was a lot rougher than people know and think. And I got away with murder. So being a young parent that helped you with uh, knowing, like, what the kid's trying to get past mm-hmm, you you mm-hmm. know like my my boys probably think they be getting away with a lot of stuff but I already be knowing what they be doing but I just can't be on top of everything but I, I pick and choose my battles mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know and um, you know mom she get it but don't get it cause she a female and she don't really know how we think so all the sneaking and creeping and you know hanging out and being rough and hanging with the wrong people and the wrong crowds and thinking where well, you can get away with this and that. Like, I didn't did and done it all. And I'm still super young. So I know exactly what be going on. But I don't be want to, like, you know, I, I try not to overdo it, you know, as far as, like, putting, you know, the, the, the cuffs on them. But, and I still try to let them be kids. But at the same time, like, it's 2023 and stuff was happening way before my time. During my time and after our time, but it just seemed like stuff just getting crazier and crazier. So I always had this thing where I ain't never want nothing to happen on my watch. Mm-hmm. So like if 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 I'm not there, you know, and you get a, a crazy, God forbid, tragic phone call or something, like you lose your mind. But like happening on my watch, I'm not going. You know, ain't no nothing crazy while I'm watching. Right. And like my pops always <clears throat> said, nobody better to do it than me. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I'd be thinking, I'd be driving. You know, as a kid, I, we didn't took a trillion trips all across the world. I'd rather be driving because if I'm going to fall asleep and something happened, I'd rather it be under my control, not letting somebody else drive, you know, a mom drive or a friend drive or a cousin or somebody. Like, I mean, I got to be absolutely dead tired to not, you know, to hand somebody else that wheel because... If I can do it, I'd rather do it because I trust myself. And you can't go wrong with betting on yourself. You know what I'm saying? Them consequences that I can live with if something happened on my watch. So, like, you know, family, I'm overprotective. Like, I own all my kids. It's just what it is. So, like, they still be doing little stuff, and I'd be like, not really wanting it to happen. But I don't want them to be thinking, like, I'm weird or nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But... I, I I know the exact feeling. I, I'm like that with Xavier. Just yesterday, he he went to the beach. Yeah. Um, he went to Indiana Dunes, and um, I I had a difficult time with that. Like because to me, that's the start of like yeah, letting that, him go. And, letting him go. Yeah. And, and I and I, I can I, I'll tell y'all both. I know y'all know Xavier, and y'all know me pretty well. I'm not ready to let go. It it wouldn't it wouldn't even be so much of the letting them you know. Go as far as me It's so much crazy stuff happening Right, right. Like I don't It could be a parade It could be It's just cra- it's cra- it, it could be It's the, crazy Taste of Chicago it, it could be Six Flags It could be anything like Mass shootings Like It's getting to the point where It sounds crazy And I know A lot of people feel like What's gonna happen Gonna happen But I just feel like If some of it could be avoided Why not avoid it? Why yeah. not avoid it? Yep, yep. I just had a conversation with my son They don't get it even like he wanted to go to Six Flags with his friend and they just took off. And then we didn't know. I'm like, okay, well, what if I got a phone call? Something happened to my son at Six Flags. And I'm like, no, it didn't. Because my son at home. Right, 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 right. He here and he at Six Flags and I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then he's sitting up there, you know, and he's smacking his lips. And all, and then next week it's a shooter. It's a shooting at Six Flags. So I'm like, okay, what if he was there that day? You know what I'm saying? Like stuff is getting crazy. I just. I remember a little movie story when they, people was in the movie theater watching a the movie. It, was that Batman? Or yeah, Batman Co- in Colorado. And somebody yep. came in, shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And, and, and if you can do that in the movie theater, and if you can walk into a school and, and shoot and kill little kids, 
that's obviously some type of mental, you know, illness. If you could do that there, then anything is possible anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm overprotective with mine. It's actually just, like, one of my only fears. That's So, I have two. That is one. Yeah. And one of my biggest fears, and I, and I hate to talk about because I don't want to speak it into existence, but I always feel like my fear is something, someone breaking into my home and doing something and I'm not there. Mm. That's like one of my biggest fears. And my wife teases me because it's like, that's one of my fears, but sometimes I'll fall asleep downstairs on the couch with the door unlocked. Yeah. Or with the door open, if we've had the door open yeah. throughout the day. So you just that, overly protected yeah, over the house. I, I'm, I'm just, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm very weird yeah. in that way, but I don't apologize for that shit at all. Yeah. Not, not in the least bit. Um, so last question for you both, and it's kind of a two-part question. The first part is, what are y'all thoughts on this John Morant shit? Um, I feel like it's... Before you answer, I know specifically your trajectory, right? So I, I do want you to be mindful of that, God willing, someday right. you're going to be among that elite playing in that league. So I don't want you to right, put right. your stuff... You know what I'm saying? Like, So I want you to answer honestly, but I also want you to answer like with that in mind as well. Um, I definitely feel like it's a mistake, but also kind of got to remember like, like we in the big league, you in the big leagues now. So like a, maybe a minor mistake to somebody that's not you, it's not going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. It's going to be something small, but just because of like the name and the profile of who that person is, mm -hmm. anything you do is going to like. Make it seem like it's the worst thing ever. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, just got kind of got to be mindful of what's going on. What about you, Jeremiah? Mm, I would say it's a mistake too. Um, he just gotta watch his surroundings, and I feel like he in Memphis, and Memphis ain't sweet. So <laughs> he also got to protect himself. And if you watch Jai, you see like he don't ride around no security. Nobody to protect him and just be him and his friend. So but that's what he said. He too. also got it to like protect himself too. So okay, that's why I think he well, got it. When you are that status, you know, what I'm saying you you're not really supposed to be. You're supposed to be inside right. anyway. Or even if you out, you are supposed to have paid people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So if it's me, if I'm Ja, and I want to be with all y'all, you know what I mean. It's a it's a you might big, have one. big motherfucker sitting right over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Like if y'all with me, oh yeah, if somebody gotta have security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. He, like three of y'all should have one on mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if if, if the other two don't, though, like that's what you like. If my boys ever made it or made it big or something, like they only be riding around with no guns. But you you had you one or two people, you know, at all times. At all security. times, yeah. One on your left, one on your right, yeah. And that's their job. That's what they get. Paid that's what for. they get paid to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So last question. Take about. Three to five seconds. I want you to send a message to your future self. I want you to talk in third person, like Jeremiah, and then your message to yourself, Jeremy, and then a the message to yourself. I'm going to start with you, Jeremiah. What's your message to yourself? How, like how long? Like five years, 10 years, or just future? Just your future self. Stay focused. Mm. Jeremiah will say just like he said, stay focused, stay on track, and keep working towards being a professional athlete. Um, Jeremy, uh, stay on the right path. You can do anything you put your mind to, and if you want something to happen, go make it happen. I really appreciate y'all coming on. It's 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 um I, I texted Xavier today, right? And I told him that you guys y'all have always been very supportive of the platform. Um your pop especially, but you know, whenever I call your dad I, and as a father, I, you know, I always run things through your dad. I mean, obviously I can I feel like I have the relationship where I can easily reach out to you guys, but I always run things through your father because like I want it to be on the up and up. But I, I just really appreciate y'all just always being supportive of the platform, always um, taking some time just to either come play or just, you know, whatever my family, uh, you know, pops, like just your, your, 
like two years ago, I remember you called me. I was working for this job, and I remember you called me. I was in the break room, and you called me and was like, "Hey, I'm Wednesday to come over and play, you know, play on, on, you know, with us on this circuit." And you just gave me some really good feedback, and it was like our first real in depth conversation. Um, but it was very, it was very meaningful to me. So I just, you know, just really want to thank you for that. And I just want to thank all three of you. Like you, you raising some good boys, bro. Like for real. Like you should really take. You you really need your flowers and knowing that. And, and I know it's a team effort with, with their mom and everything and the rest of your family. But sometimes fathers don't get a lot of the deserving um, appreciation that we pour into our boys. And like it, it, I know I don't need to tell y'all y'all got a good pop and um just continue working hard and just you know just never really forget the things that that's kind of um planted in you as, as y'all continue to grow and develop and um i just i just really thank y'all like seriously like i words can't really express how appreciative i'm i am of y'all taking the time out of y'all day after just traveling and, and you know and just you know making some time to to, to uh Pour into something that I'm starting, so I really thank y'all for that. Like genuinely, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, no. I need to, you know, camps, games, uh, podcasts, yeah. workouts, all of it. Thank pro, you, a little pro amp thing. Yeah, none of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate up, that. Thank you. Um, we're gonna end on that note. I do want to send a quick shout out, obviously, um, to my producer uh, Bo and Go- uh, Goldmine TV. I want to send a shout out to my guy Tyree Booker and Numerex and um, everybody that's supporting the platform. I really appreciate y'all. And um, as we continue to grow this thing, um, just keep supporting. Uh, we're going to get as many of these high school athletes on here as possible. Let their voices be heard. Get some of these bloggers, these these videographers, these photographers, people that move the needle when it comes to Chicago basketball. And it's, it's obviously, you know, you guys are definitely the needle movers in, in this culture. And it needs to be said and it needs to be heard. So I really appreciate y'all. Thanks, Thank man. you. Thanks, Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and watching.